Hi everyone, I'm Alex Nada from Access Technology. I'm a data masking practice lead. I'm going to talk to you today about encryption versus data masking as a data privacy control. A lot of customers ask me, we have virtual environments, but we're using encryption. Is that a good enough control? And the answer very often is not quite. You still have some exposures, and I'm going to show you what those are. Here I have a typical virtual environment. I have some virtual storage, which is holding a database, maybe some additional files, some sort of uh, data storage here. I have a virtual server that has uh, an application server and a presentation layer. Maybe it's a web application. It could be some other type of application. Uh, and this entire environment might contain personal information. Let's just say that there's uh, some kind of personal information residing in your database. It might be social security numbers, but also names, addresses, a home phone number, even zip plus four, anything that's granular enough that it leads you down to a single individual or could potentially expose a single individual. The application's interacting with the database, so we have some personal information on the wire. It's in the app server, again on the wire to the presentation layer. If there's any network involved, it's in the presentation layer. It's going out to these users, and the users themselves have this personal information. And there's exposures all up and down this, this entire thing. First of all, these users, if they're in application development, may put that into a whole variety of different places. It can go into their email, their bug tracking, their desktops. The reason that this is such a concern in the virtual world is that many of my customers have told me that one of the ways that they're using virtual technology is to spin up very many dedicated development environments. They used to have maybe a few shared environments. Nowadays, they have hundreds. And the autonomy that the development organizations have over those environments has greatly increased. They're asking, how can I control this stuff? As it is, they have exposures across the, across the entire realm. Let me show you what encryption does to control that. Essentially, with encryption, we can do a variety of things. First of all, everything that's on the wire, we can encrypt that on the wire. And what encryption does is essentially puts that communication into an opaque envelope. So you, can't, you can no longer see it on the wire. If the network admin is looking at this, they see uh, encrypted data. Unless they crack your encryption, you're safe. You can do the same thing here. The same thing with communication to the presentation layer. HTTPS, if it's a web application, etc. Next, you can encrypt the data in the database at rest, which essentially wraps this in, a, in an opaque envelope. Which means if those fields are encrypted in your database, they're safe from your, from your DBA. Uh, they're safe from your storage admin. If they're encrypted in your application server and in your presentation layer, your operations people can't see it. Your operating system admins can't see it. The problem is that your developers and your, and your QA people, they need to open the envelope and look at the data. That's what, that's what the application actually does. So if they're using real data to do their testing, even if you've encrypted all up and down the stream, they see real data. It's still going to creep out into your, your emails, your bug tracking systems, maybe onto the desktops. They may download data or even simply take screenshots or uh, copy things out of the application. So with encryption, it really doesn't control this threat. Ultimately, you can have an attacker anywhere along this thing. You could have a, a, either a, a rogue employee or contractor in the storage space, in the network space. You could also have somebody who gains access to your network or your storage architecture. Somebody who gains access to your application layer. You could have a rogue developer who, who wants to sell identity theft information and do all kinds of data privacy bad things. So essentially, the way that data masking differs from this is, let's just say this is a source environment. This is an environment containing production data. And I'm cloning a new environment over here. What I do is, as I move the data, I send it through a data masking layer here. That cleans the data. The way that it does that is it replaces those particular data elements that uh, constitute personal information with surrogate information. So we'll have a, a fake SSN in place of the real SSN. 
will have fictitious names in place of the people's real names. We treat everything that way. It's surgical, so it doesn't necessarily change all the data, and the production data still looks the way it did. The difference is that the actual sensitive attributes that lead you back to an individual person are, or are exploitable, like a social security number or a credit card number, are replaced with fake data. So now we still have personal information or private information in this data store, but it's, it's fictitious, falsified personal information. Now, you can have that on the wire, it'll be in the application server. This surrogate personal information flows throughout the entire architecture. What this, is, what this does, in effect, is makes it so that every person along this chain, in this cloned environment, sees only false information. That's why data masking is an effective privacy control uh, for personal information. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex from Axis. Have a good one.